I, I knew so many people who were losing their faith in Melbourne and um, I'd had a number of conversations with, with, with young adults who come to church and they were the last one of their friendship group um, sort of still in faith. We also had a number of people with quite serious I would I would almost say bullying at work over their faith, like right. not just the usual jokes. I mean, yeah. like full blown people walking up to them and sort of questioning, you know, how can they almost be in the public sphere being a Christian? So I just felt like this incredible pressure. Um, we got to Easter Sunday and we have a big combined service and um, that finishes and like we have holidays after that. So two weeks of holidays. So like everyone sort of dismissed. Um, I was flying out to the US um, the next day and had left a book at my office I wanted to read on the plane and got around to our offices and I come around the corner, sort of tired, hurried, big weekend. We have like this big Passover meal. We then have Good Friday, Easter Sunday, all the services, exhausted and pull around the corner and and just across the front of our church, I can just see this giant sheet and then the words, off God. And I'm like, oh my goodness, (laughs) what is this? And I look. You can imagine I'm, what the, uh, the yes, sheets, what word the yes. sheet might be covering. I was hoping, but no. And I lift it off, and you know, there's the f bomb there. And it just was this sense, like someone's done this on on Saturday night for Easter Sunday. This isn't just. It was too rant. It wasn't, you know, it was too yeah. planned, you know. Yeah. And I just like my heart sank, and it felt like there was this tremendous pressure, just coming from the culture that had just ratcheted it up, and. Um, I just like grabbed my phone. Who do I call? I thought, oh, my staff all disappeared. And, and then I thought, who's a really helpful volunteer? You've always got one in church. You'd be like, happy to paint <laughs> uh, it off the wall. And and then I just felt like God say, no, no, I, I want you to paint it. I then sort of noticed that someone had left this note at the, on sort of at the bottom. And it was this just typed letter from across the road. There's a Catholic parish and, and, and a Catholic school. And it was just this note from the father there. Um, and it just basically said, you know, hi, Red Church. We're really sorry that this this has greeted you this Easter morning. We spent, you know, I think they were there for like 6 a.m. mass or something. You know, the people had come out and they'd all sat on chairs and tried to scrub it off. Wow. And then all they could do was put this sheet across it yeah. and, you know, wishing us a really wonderful Easter. And it just changed it. It yeah. reframed it for me. Um, my, my wife's family are from Northern Ireland and both her parents were born in Belfast. And... You understand the sectarianism that happened there and how uh, Christians fought over Catholicism and Protestantism. And then I just had this like this beautiful image in my head of these Catholics coming and serving our church, which is Protestant, you know, on chairs trying to scrub this off. And I just thought, how weird, like this moment of sort of anti-Christian sentiment has actually brought this moment of Christian unity. Mm. So I spent the rest of the sort of afternoon painting this thing. And it was really weird. It was like I'd been so running around and harried that it was like this focal activity where I'm just like focusing and painting. And and then it was it like calmed me down. And then it was like a blank slate. And I felt like God saying, what if at this moment of intense post-Christian pressure, actually there's this blank slate I'm creating for you. And that moment reframed. And, and that's really where the genesis of my book, Reappearing Church, came from. Like, what if this could be our best moment? 